हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज अभिषेक झा करेंटली वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट आई एम टी ग्रुप ऑफ कॉलेज ग्रेटर नोएडा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सम कॉन्सेप्ट नेचर एंड फंक्शनल एरियाज ऑफ बिजनेस मैनेजमेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज बिजनेस मैनेजमेंट मैनेजमेंट इज यूनिवर्सल एंड यू बी कोचेस यू बी कोचेस मीन्स विच इज प्रेजेंट एवरी डे any activity of human being cannot be completed without application of management theories peter f drucker who is one of the management scientist one says management is the dynamic life giving element in every business without its leadership the resources of production remains resources and never become production characteristics of match first point management is a process which is always goes on it is never end second point it is an endeavor to achieve the predetermined objectives and without group activity one cannot proper and arrange things properly so the next is group activity you can which results in economic terms and management is science and also as an art science because like in science we did so many experiments and the scientific facts are based on universal truths and art trained us to be in the situational leadership so management is a profession also and management application is universal in nature it has separate identity and whether the organization is big or small it applies everywhere because it is ubiquitous need of organization and system is authority and the quality of leadership so why management is science and why management is art science means the science is the systemized body of knowledge and uses scientific methods for observation and art is related to the way of doing specific things so management is both science as well as art management is a profession also because it has substantial body of accumulated knowledge compulsory acquisition of management knowledge managerial tools a distinct discipline and use of specialized experts and change in outlook and code of conduct it means like a doctor who is treating their patient it is also comes under the purview of profession because to be a professional we need to have some a uh, separate skill certificate and separate skill education and if we talk about the management process <laughs> management has very processes so much processes like planning and planning is never ending whatever plan we do like the management hierarchy is divided into the three parts top level middle level and lower level so the main task of top level is to make the plans and to implement those plans <coughs> it comes under the purview of middle level and to execute it to work on that plan is the work of lower level so first point is planning after that it is organizing and when we did the two things then after that we actually implement the plan and after the implementation we just look controlling and how we do the things significance of management meet challenge of change effective utilization of 7m development of resources direct to the organization it provides stability also and innovation in 21st century which is the <coughs> age of knowledge basically we require so much of 
innovation so that we have the we can have the competitive advantage management generally execute the things human resources and physical resources in human resources is personal administration that means staff administration training development of human environment and development of natural talents suppose if we have lot of degrees but we don't know how to manage the things then it will be the major disadvantage because at this period of time we have to be multi dimensional and if we talk about the physical resources like we have the suppose we have the good amount of administration good amount of uh, human resources but to implement all this to fulfill the objectives of organization we must have physical resources like finance which is the which can be called as the petrol of businesses second raw material if we don't have raw material we cannot convert we we cannot uh, make the finished products third one is building like fixed assets anything like plant and machinery building and other resources <clears throat> there was a one uh, manage uh, management scientist uh, whose name was Winsberg uh, uh, who defined the managerial roles and it was uh, classified into three categories first one is interpersonal and in interpersonal there is three different subjects like figure head leader and liaison second informational in informational managerial role monitor disseminator and spokesperson third one he gave was decisional in decisional was entrepreneur disturb disturbance handler resource allocator and negotiator now friends if we talk about the functional areas of management and first one is personal management that is a uh, staff management because one of the most important role uh, played in uh, any organization is about their staff if your staff is uh, working effectively and efficiently then you will become the market leader otherwise all the things all the areas of management will go down second one is financial management and uh, as we all know uh, finance is like the petrol for any organization and here the three decisions are there exist first one is investment decision in investment decision we actually decide whether uh, we are to invest money and uh, we are not second is financing decision financing decision basically is all about from where the, from where we gather all the funds uh, like from equity uh, preference retain earnings whatever the sources of business finances are and basically we see the adequate mixture of uh, debt or equity uh, and from where the cost of funds is lower and from there we get all the source of finance third dividend decision and it is one of the very important decision from the perspective of the shareholder because uh, dividend basically influences the decision making of investor whether to invest in uh, this company or not so dividend uh, like for example there is a company called vedanta limited which uh, its founder is uh, anil agrawal Uh, Vedanta generally gives a twelve percent or eleven to twelve percent dividend per year. Second company, I O L Indian Oil Limited, which is a P S U basically. So these companies are basically dividend oriented companies. Their share grows uh, in a very <laughs> slow rate, but they are generally they generally give good amount of dividend to their shareholder because one only will invest money uh, if. he satisfy with the financial conditions of the company and shareholder generally expect good amount of return only then they will invest their money or their pool of funds or channelize their funds into different different companies so this is very important aspect of financial management the three decision basically investment financing and decision dividend decision
थर्ड वन इज मार्केटिंग मैनेजमेंट इफ यू मेक द प्रोडक्ट वेरी गुड बट आवर मार्केटिंग इज नॉट गुड देन इट माइट बी पॉसिबल दैट वी विल fail and we will not be able to on the good amount of revenues fourth one is production management after that purchase management purchase management is equally very important for the managers because we will purchase the goods from there only from where we have a good rate of discount uh, so that our cost of production can uh, be low and uh, the profit margin get high development management maintenance management and after that office management now development of management thought as we all know management is a thought process so uh, generally the job of a top level is to think so that's why every big organization keeps a think tank with themselves so there are basically three kind of approaches first one is a classical approach second uh, one is neo classical approach and third one is modern approach so classical approach uh, was relevant uh, when uh, they firstly identified like the fw taylor or administrative or functional or process approach it was given by the henry fayol scientific management was given by the fw taylor and bureaucratic approach was given by the weber and uh, it is very interesting to know that uh, through bureaucratic approach uh, our government departments are basically working on this on this type of approach right so <laughs> we all know neo classical approach it is all about the decentralization of power uh, structural informal and decentralization centralization centralization means uh, when uh, the decision making is uh, in the hands of one and decentralization means the dilution of power basically when power get dissolved and segregated into the different different departments modern approach is all about the mathematical school uh, system management school it was given by the modern approach. so in today's era uh, we can see the practicality of a uh, mixture of the three the good points of the three first one is a uh, weaver the approach the bureaucratic uh, system basically it is seen in the uh, mixed economy system and uh, neo in terms of neo classic approach the decentralization for example uh, north korea is using the highly decentralized system uh, modern approach is the mixture of basically it is basically situational based whatever the situation we are in because management is an art and we must uh, and it is pervasive also after that planning process uh, in planning process we do analysis for casting determination formulation and review of so many factors like analysis of external environment analysis of internal environment define the we must define the what is the mission of the enterprise what are the objectives of the enterprise uh, we'll forecast the planning premise and after all this we will decide what can be the alternative course of action and the sequence of activities what should be done before what should be after that so uh, after that we will select the best course of alternatives on sequencing of activities uh, if uh, we are thinking about uh, the long term scenario so we must evaluate the proposals very well and formulate a strategy for long range planning and uh, formation of functional or tactical planning so here we uh, read a subject for strategic management which is all about the long range and tactical planning uh, in this we define like the swot analysis pestel analysis formulation of action program and reviewing and recycling the planning process now plans are classified into <coughs> various ways like uh, two types of plans standard and single use in standard plans we basically defines the mission objectives policies procedure rules and methods and strategies and single use plans are basically it's like the wrapper once you draft the back you can throw a wet program and in the single use plan there are basically the four point program project budget and standard 
so uh, in decision making decision making basically is the selection based on some criteria whenever we decide something so we must have some criteria with ourselves so from two or more possible alternatives and it was said by george r cherry who was the one of the management scientists any decision have some characteristic uh, like the choice of best course of action uh, and results basically end process and decision making is a broad mental exercise so it is a mental process it involves rationality and uh, achieving the objectives there are a uh, lot of uh, types of decision first one is programmed and non programmed decision major and minor decision and routine and strategic decision policy decision and operative decision organizational and personal decision individual and group decision long term departmental and non economical decision of process of decision making how we make decision it has some process like first one is diagnosing the problem of defining it secure an analysis of pertinent facts the development of alternative course of action optimum course of action deciding upon the best solution or optimum course of action convert the decision into effective decision and implementing and verifying it now we talk about the mbo that is a uh, management by objectives basically it is a system of management involving effective participation here the main word is effective participation and second is involvement by each member of the organization that means equal and active participation of all everybody who is the part of organization the discipline of mbo that is management by objectives makes each individual strength effort establish team work and harmony harmonize the goals of individual now if we talk about the benefits of mbo that is management by objectives first and important benefit is in planning after the delegation job investment decision making feedback and accountability mbo process that is management by objective process first of all we must establish the goals of the organization second we must set the objectives action planning performance review and after all the above agendas we must evaluate our process that is final evaluation but everything has uh, they are demerit to over the limitations of management by objective this is a time taking process because it requires a lot of brainstorming session uh lot of paperwork activities it is inflexible sometimes because basically what uh, we see in the practical that the execution of a plan of by the top level is uh, maybe forcefully executed to the middle or lower level so uh, technically there is no independency or leadership problem issues others now organization and departmentation organization is the foundation upon which the whole structure of management is built is the backbone of the management system and it is a mechanism which enable men to live together if we are the part of any organization then we have some agenda some motives a structure that is meant by a group of people so there are two types of organization formal organization and uh, informal organization and if we talk about the importance of organization it facilitates administration facilitates growth and diversification provides for the optimum use of technological improvements encourages human beings stimulates creativity authority authority is the right to give orders and powers to the right audience and if i talk about uh, responsibility then responsibility simply means duty activity and sometimes authority because without responsibility there is no authority centralization it implies that a majority of the decision regarding the work are made by those made not by those doing the work but a point higher up in the organization 
that means if boss is taking all the decision rather than uh, asking from the employees then it is called centralization and if he asks everybody and after that uh, he delegate to the lowest level of all authority except that which can be only exercised at central points is called decentralization so it was all uh, for the management uh, lecture i hope you all uh, find it suitable and find it knowledgeable and uh, whatever your doubts are you can ask uh, thank you i <laughs> think